What's going on? Make sure y'all share the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we have made it to the first game of the regular season, the opening game of the regular season for the Charlotte Hornets, and they will be on the road down there in Houston taking on the very talented, very underrated Houston Rockets with names like, uh, what's his name? Um, the Turk. I can't even think of his name right now. Um, but they got him. They got Jalen Green. Cam Whitmore coming off the bench. Bench uh, Fred, Fred Van Fleet. Uh, so many names that the Hornets are going to have to watch out for early in this game and throughout the duration of this game. But before we talk about this pregame, we break down pregame and predict what we think is going to happen. I need y'all to do me a favor. Make sure y'all run the likes up, share the video, like the video, and subscribe. And be prepared tonight. We will be doing a watch party, not here on YouTube, but over on Playback. So if you want to watch the game, then make sure you pull up over there. I'm going to have everything ready for you on the Lit House Playback. A lot of people trying to copy the style, but they can't do it like us. You know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all run the likes up, share the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Let's get into the actual breakdown of the game, though. I want to talk about the breakdown of the game. Because this Houston Rockets team is a team that you don't take lightly. And to me, it, it's one of the worst teams you want to play on opening night. They're a young team. They got a lot to prove. Uh, they got a lot of talent. And for some reason, it's being underrated. Uh, number one threat on this team, starting off, even though he didn't get the biggest deal out of the two stars, Jalen Green is going to be a threat the entire night. Uh, he's a guy that if you're not sound defensively on the wing, if you're not sound on your switches, if you're, if you're going under screens, he can absolutely murder you. Um, I think he's a matchup nightmare for 99% of the league. I think he's coming into his own. I watched him all preseason. He's shooting the ball at a very high clip from three-point range. He's explosive like Anthony Edwards. He has some wiggle to him, some shift to him, can finish at the rim. Um, what you got to hope for with a guy like Jalen Green is yet just that it's not his night from three. Because if you allow him to get hot from three and he can get to the rack and he can get to the free throw line, then this kid is pretty unstoppable. You got to hope to play the averages and hope he's not hitting as many shots as, you know what I'm saying, not, not hitting a majority of shots of what he's taking. If not, you're going to be in trouble. And um, the Hornets are going to have to be sound on those pick and rolls, going to have to hedge. And I have to make sure we're popping up and contesting those threes without fouling. Um, we would rather him get to the rack and make him earn it than just walk into threes. This is the type of game, I'm going to be honest. When you play a young team versus young team, it becomes a war of talent early in the season. Who is the most talented? Who can execute the best? Who has the best game plan? If it's a young team versus an old team early in the season, what you have seen historically is that a lot of young teams can jump on, jump on old teams early because old teams take a while to get going. They're not going full speed. But tonight, the Hornets are starting off. Matter of fact, the first two nights that the Hornets play tonight and, and, and here in Atlanta on Friday, they're playing two young teams. So they're going to have to go out there and compete. They're going to have to put their best foot forward. It's not going to be they're going to be able to jump on them and just wear them down with fast breaks. No, you're going to have to go out there and be able to execute against this Emmy Adoka Houston Rockets team. But Jalen Green is the first name that I really wanted to look at. The next name that I want to go to, which is an absolute threat as well on the inside, that's his name. I don't know why I was thinking about Saloon, but Alperun Sengun. He is the star of the team. He got the most money. Uh, him and Jalen Green got paid on the same day. I think he came in at five years, 195, averaging 21 points a game last year, nine rebounds, five assists, uh, very crafty when it comes to the post, very crafty when it comes to footwork, also can pass, can get others involved if you try to double-team him. He's like in the model of a, a Nikola Jokic, uh, but a Nikola Jokic light. He's not as tall as him. He's not as... Uh, 
physically imposing as Jokic is, but he definitely is somebody that can score the basketball on a high clip and is um, a student of the game when it comes to uh, post work, footwork, passing out of the double teams, drawing in the double teams, finding open looks for his teammates. Um, everything's going to run through him when it comes to that high post, low post area. He can also step out and shoot that three. These are two guys that we're going to have to really be cued in on and we're going to have a chance of winning this game. Now, one thing I'll say about Sangoon that the media doesn't talk about, and this is why you come over here to the Lit House to get real basketball breakdowns and not just, you know, fan speak. Um, from a basketball perspective, what the media never highlights is he's a turnstile defensively and he's not physically imposing when it comes to blocking shots. So if you get downhill against this Houston Rockets team and you're committed to it, you can make some hay. Are you going to get every foul call? No. Are you going to get a lot of the foul calls? Probably not. You're the Charlotte Hornets. Let's just be real about it. But you have to stay committed to going in there, taking some punishment, but finishing over this guy. Because this guy is not the, the fleetest of foot. He's not a big-time shot blocker. And it'll be opportunities for LaMelo, Brandon Miller, Trey Mann, and Miles Bridges to really get downhill and hurt the Houston Rockets going to the paint. I know head coach Charles Lee, this is his first game. Uh, coaching as a head coach in the NBA, but he's imploring that Boston Celtics style that we saw last night, uh, listening to the owner, uh, uh, Gabe Plotkin and Rick Schnell, the owners of the Charlotte Hornets. They want the Hornets stars, LaMelo Ball and Brandon Miller, taking more threes. But I don't want them to forget, especially in a game like this, inside, outside, baby. You know what I'm saying? When, when, when the three ain't falling, get down, he'll get to the rack, get some easy buckets. Everything else will open up for you. And I think with uh, Sangoon, he provides an opportunity for guys to be able to score down there in the paint. I got to keep the ball movement going. And, and, you know, when you make a move, got to commit to it and, 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 and you know, uh, do your best to finish. Uh, another player that I want to highlight, someone who's had, uh, you know, some, some words with LaMelo in the past, someone who – Fell in the draft two years ago, never understood it. Cam Whitmore. Uh, Cam Whitmore is a defensive pest, but not only is he a defensive pest, offensively he has everything you want. Uh, he can shoot the three ball. He's explosive going to the rim. He's a guy coming off the bench when they stagger LaMelo's minutes. I look for him to be matched up with LaMelo Ball a lot. They have a history. Uh, last game he got the better of LaMelo. Um, this is going to be a spicy matchup. And it's going to be one to watch tonight. Cam Whitmore is definitely, definitely a guy that could turn the tables as far as that young death that I was talking about overall the great teams in this league have. Um, he can turn the ties as far as the outcome of this game very easily. So Cam Whitmore is someone we definitely need to keep a watch on. They also drafted Reed Shepard. Reed Shepard, a guy who has been uh, heralded as uh, – a guy who's been heralded as someone who reminds a lot of players is, I mean, a lot of our GMs is Steph Curry. I'm not going to go so far to say that, but I will say Reed Shepard definitely looks like a guy that is well coached, uh, you know, fundamental, uh, come off that pick, one, two dribbles, mid range, pull up, can shoot the three ball at a high cliff, a lot more athletic than people give him credit for. He's a guy that uh, I think he, had a 42-inch vertical coming out of Kentucky at the combine, uh, and defensively he can strap up. He's a very uh, uh, he's a very pesky defender. Uh, can steal the ball, can swipe the ball, get back down the court, and finish on his own, as well as make plays for teammates. So that's another guy we got to watch out for. Amin Thompson, Amin Thompson. I would imagine that the game starts off with Amin Thompson matched up on the mellow ball. Um, his job is going to be to stay in front of LaMelo, uh, make things mucky, make things dirty for LaMelo, um, get him to rush his shot, get him to rush his decision-making process, and um, contest the shots, contest at the rim. Uh, he has some height. He has some limbs. He's in the mode of a, a run our test. A good defender, but in transition, he can be dangerous offensively. I think he's definitely a guy that's going to be matched up with LaMelo, and it's going to be matched up with Brandon Miller at times. Even though I'm sh I know they got B. Smith um, for, for, for Brandon Miller, I, I think this team just matches up good. 
with the Hornets, man. This is gonna be it's gonna be a tough game. This is not gonna be an easy opening game. And I'm going to keep it real with you since we're about to get into the predictions. I don't predict final scores because the Los Mineral Dial is the only one that knows the outcome of the final score. But I will say from my, my limited knowledge, this is a game that can get out of hand. Like I said, two young teams, you're on the road, you're playing a Western Conference um, playoff contender at home with a lot to prove. You know, they got a lot of good players. They got a lot of good role players. This could be ugly. I think the key to the game for the Hornets is to get stops, uh, finish in transition, shoot the three at a high percentage, uh, uh, um, not fall asleep on the backside defensively. In the half-court sets, get into your pick-and-roll action, uh, get shots that are effective shots, get shots that are winning shots. Um you're not going to hit everything, but, but don't be afraid to shoot it. Have an aggressive mentality. Have a underdog mentality. That's what it's going to take for the Charlotte Hornets to win this game. They have to come out hungry. They got to come out focused. Um, they can't come out here. Because sometimes I've noticed, man, in LaMelo's tenure, he plays at a speed that is very so callish. If you're a hooper, you know what I'm saying. So cal hoopers. They play at a very casual speed, and sometimes that hurts the flow of the game. I wouldn't mind LaMelo coming out and trying to get everybody else going tonight and then getting his later on. But I think his speed needs to be up. He, his energy needs to be up. He needs to be focused. Um, and just continue to build, each quarter build, each quarter get more comfortable. Um, we're going to need help from our bench, guys like Trey Mann. If Josh Green could go, I know he may be a starter, but guys like Josh Green, they gotta they gotta really step it up defensively. Um, you know, uh, these kind of guys really gotta step up tonight for us and, and, and make an immediate uh, immediate impact. You know what I'm saying? But uh, y'all, let me know what y'all think down in the comment section. What y'all think is gonna happen in this game? Please share this video, run this video, I mean, uh, uh, share this video, run the likes up, subscribe to the channel. Also, go ahead, click on that link to playback. We will be on playback tonight, having a watch party on playback. You do not want to miss it. It's open at night. We look forward to seeing you guys. We'll be getting started around 7.30 p.m. Eastern, uh, 6.30 p.m. Central. Make sure y'all pull up. Y'all let us know what y'all think about the game tonight. Y'all share the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and tell me who y'all think we're going to get tonight, good mellow or bad mellow. I, I'm thinking B. Miller is going to be out of this world, and I think La, uh, LaMelo's going to struggle a bit. They're going to be throwing a lot of looks at LaMelo, and, and, and I just don't think he's going to have a good game. But y'all let me know down in the comment sections below. Run the likes up, share the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, become a member of the channel, and I'll see you on playback tonight.